Hi, this is Tom Gonzalez with Brightpoint Consulting, and today I wanted to talk to you about DeckGL. This is one of the frameworks in Uber's open source data visualization library. And what's unique about all of these frameworks uh, that Uber has put out is that they rely upon WebGL. And why is that relevant? Well, WebGL offers in-browser game quality graphics. And what does this mean for data visualization? Well, traditional data visualization technologies for the web, usually you can render hundreds, thousands of data points. Um, with using something like WebGL, you can render upwards of a million data points. And so for geospatial data visualization work, this has a significant meaning. A lot of geospatial work requires a lot of data to be rendered to the screen. And DeckGL is Uber's geospatial data visualization framework. So today I want to walk you through some examples, show you the concepts that are used in DeckGL, and then show you a quick proof of concept that I put together just as I was learning how to use this to evaluate, is this really a framework that I could use to help clients out with in terms of improving their products? So <clears throat> one of the main concepts in DeckGL is this idea of using layers. And what I mean by layers is that each layer can represent a different type of visualization. Uh, the base layer in all of these deck GL renderings um, uses map box to render a map. And then on top of that map, you can import data and use a specific type of rendering. So the, one of the first ones I want to show you is this uh, 3D polygon layer. And in this example, what we're looking at here is uh, buildings in downtown Vancouver, British Columbia. And they are color coded based off of the change in property value with um, properties that have decreased in value in this light teal color and properties that have increased in value this darker red color. So I can very easily just zoom in on this map. I can rotate it around. Look at different perspectives. And as you can probably see, this is very similar to the type of experience you might have in a game. Um, so meaning that it's a very seamless 3D experience, high frame rates that um, allow for a high level of user engagement. At the same time, we're also visualizing data. So I put my mouse over this red building. We can see the change in property value, which was greater than this other building over here. So I'll zoom back out. Um, I will mention also that right now I'm running on a laptop that's about seven years old, um, not a super powerful machine. And when I'm running the screencast software, it slows things down a little bit. But typically on this laptop, I can see frame rates 30, 40, 50 frames per second. The next layer I want to show you is called a paths layer. Um, and what a path is um, in data visualization terms is a line connected by vertexes. So think of roadways or a perfect you know, concept of a path. In this case, we're visualizing uh, fatal accidents on US highways. Um, not the most amazing visualization, but what is really significant here is the amount of data that's being shown and how seamlessly I can zoom in and out. Um, I've done this type of work before with other frameworks. And I can tell you, just trying to render all of these data points, never mind being able to animate them, sometimes will just bring the browser to its knees. It's just a lot of data to be rendered to the screen with traditional technologies. In this case, we're looking at over 120,000 unique paths with over 400,000 unique vertexes. I can easily zoom in on this and zoom back out. Um, what you notice with most mapping software is that the, I, when you zoom in and zoom out, you wait for tiles to render and you wait for the browser to catch up to you, kind of like in Google Maps. Um, and they've done a lot of nice little tricks to make that more seamless, but nothing like what you're seeing here. Um, DeckGL also offers other types of visualization layers, some not just related to a map. In this case, we have a point cloud layer. And this looks like it was a LiDAR scan of the interior of this house. And you can see here, this is over 800,000 data points. I'm zooming in and out on. Um, very seamless in terms of being able to rotate in and out. So this has applications outside of just geospatial, but 3D, uh, any kind of 3D work. 
um, that you can represent with data. And then the final layer I wanna show you here, and there are many more, I'm just gonna go over a few and then we'll dive into the example I put together, is the TRIPS layer. And in this example, what we're looking at is uh, cab rides, yellow cab versus green crab, green cab <laughs> in downtown Manhattan. And this TRIPS layer animates these waypoints as the cabs are moving through the city streets. Clearly very applicable for Uber when they want to manage the load on their system and pickups and drop offs and all their drivers moving uh, within their system. This provides a really easy way for them to analyze that visually. Okay, now I want to take a look at an example that I put together for a company I've been doing some work with. Um, this is a company, amazing company out of Seattle uh, named Storm Sensor. And what they do is they manufacture storm sensor devices that go in municipality storm systems and collect data on the water moving through their systems. And they do this to, to help cities manage and mitigate flood situations and stormwater situations. Um, by being able to measure what's actually happening in storm events, it allows the cities to better mitigate and design systems to handle the high levels of rain, uh, climate change, flooding, tides, and what have you. So while we have produced quite a few visualizations for storm sensors some dashboards, we've even done some 2D mapping work to represent this data for their users, nothing's quite as compelling as a 3D image that really shows the relationship between different stormwater outflows, um, their performance, and then water moving through the system. Something else that is harder to represent is showing what happens in high tide situations. So for city stormwater managers, when you have a storm event plus high tides, it can wreak havoc on their outflows and stormwater system. Water backs up. So it's a really uh, it's significant to be able to understand when high tides are occurring um, in relationship to storms. So what I did here was just map a couple quick polygons for the Hudson River and the Hackensack River, and then add this ability to show when a high tide's occurring by, let's see here. There we go, let me press the right button. <laughs> by toggling this tide button, we're able to add this coloring and these strokes or paths to the edge of the river and it can simulate a visual representation of this high tide. It's on and off. The other thing that was clear we wanted to do is be able to show each stormwater outflow in relationship to its space on a map. So what you see here, these kind of cylinder, cylinder objects represent um, stormwater outflows. I think in the final product, we'll have a much more detailed 3D polygon, but I just wanted to do this as a proof of concept. Can we map this stuff? And can we highlight it? So as we mouse over, we're seeing some highlights on performance of that system. We've got pump stations that we've been able to add. Um, and then I also wanted to be able to integrate custom user uh, UX components into this. So I built a quick list that you can see here on the right. And I just built this out of HTML, added some graphs, some labels, and integrated this with D3. And when you highlight over, you can see the um, associated stormwater outflow being highlighted as well. So once again, it was very easy. It took me an hour or two just to integrate this completely different HTML component into DuckGL. Another thing that is really important that we wanted to represent was the flow of stormwater through the sewer system. So as I zoom in here, what I've done is I've plotted some actual, I went and looked at the New Jersey map, found where the sewers were, plotted these out, and these represent various manhole covers. And when I use DEX trip layer system, or trip layer, I'm able to represent the flow of water through the system. So you can see here this animation of water actually moving through the stormwater system. Now this would be based off data coming from storm sensor sensors. Um, and because we can track temperature and velocity, we can color code these streams to, um, to show in near real time what's going on with water moving through the system. Um, I think in the final product, we're gonna add stuff for flood situations, other highlights, but it could really allow city stormwater managers to more accurately view what's going on within their system during storm events. 
So why is this significant? Well, I think if I were to try to do this type of work maybe two or three years ago, just programming WebGL directly, this would have been weeks of effort to make something like this work. Um, WebGL is just a very low level programming language and the abstractions aren't there to quickly render polygons and strokes and paths and these geometries the way you can now with DuckGL. Um, I don't even know that I would have tried to do something like this because the development costs would have just been so high. This, what I'm showing you here, took me a couple days and that included me ramping up from ground zero on DuckGL, getting data into the system, customizing it, and exploring different kind of visualization treatments that I wanted to try out. And I was really pleased with the pace of development. I think given a couple more weeks, this could become a very polished example, um, a very polished rendering that really does a great job of communicating this information. So I think for companies or product managers, um, entrepreneurs, uh, anyone interested or anyone with um, data that can be represented geospatially, uh, this provides a great opportunity to really enhance your product. I can think of a couple use cases. Um, I think anyone in the mobility space that's measuring travel, whether that's personal fitness, whether that's like scooters, um, food delivery, this um, technology would provide a really easy way to kind of demonstrate and communicate the value of your data. I think another set of use cases are potentially anyone in the network security space where you're managing inbound threats across a network, whether that's a local network, whether it's a global network, you would be able to really very easily map traffic moving along your network, map threats, defenses, and what have you. There are probably a dozen other pretty compelling use cases for this type of visual treatment. So I'd really encourage you to go check it out at deck.gl. There are some great examples, some pretty robust documentation. If you have any questions or suggestions on maybe some further videos that dive into this even deeper, please leave it in the comment section below. Thanks so much.